Today, we have another Game of Thrones mead. This is Jon Snow's Black Mead. Let's get started. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. I have yet another Game of Thrones mead. This is a recipe I found from Alehorn, which is a blog, website, and I'll make sure and link them down below. But uh, I want to try this recipe. It is a black mead, and it is inspired by Jon Snow. If you watch the show, John wears a lot of black. He's part of basically a um, critical crew, I'll say, that um, protects the realm in some way. So, anyways, this is going to be a Beauchade mead. Now, I'll put the recipe right here. I'm doing half of what the listed recipe on the website says. So, I'm using nine pounds of clover honey. Um, I, in the future, I'm going to be using some cardamom and some, I think it was ginger, I could be wrong right there, and uh, Lavin EC1118 as our yeast. And then on it, it says that I need to use um, cream of tartar, which honestly I have, I don't know about. I don't know a lot about, and I know, well, I do know that it is a byproduct of wine making. Gener generally, you take it out of wine. So I don't think I'm gonna be using that. Instead, uh, I'm just gonna leave it out. So, that was my recipe. First thing we have to do, I already poured my honey into here. This is nine pounds of my honey. We are gonna go ahead and start bocheting this. The way this is gonna be black is because we are literally bocheting it for hours. So, the recipe on Alehorn says three hours. I don't think it's gonna take three hours for this to get to a dark, dark color. So, uh, let me go ahead and show you what this looks like to uh, boche it, and I won't do the whole process because it's gonna be a lot of boiling. Okay, so we are currently heating this honey and it is gonna start boiling soon, which will foam up, which is why we have a big enough pot to leave room for it to foam. I make a color wheel for everything I do. So this right here is my color wheel. You can see that we have starting point of zero minutes and every 15 minutes I will go through and get another sample. So I, will, I won't record this whole boche process, but that is what my bocheing process looks like. Two hours and 45 minutes later, we have finished bocheing our honey. Now, I'll show you the color wheel on the screen right here. You can see that it started off as a pretty normal honey color. However, by the end of it, it is pretty dark. It's almost black. Now, could I have gone further and gone pitch black? Yeah, but at some point you start to caramelize every sugar of the honey, therefore kind of not making it fermentable, and that would, I don't know, I don't want to go too far with it. So, I know I don't have a glass fermenter. All of mine are full right now. So I'm gonna be doing this in plastic. I've already filled this with two and a half gallons of spring water. I'm gonna go ahead and dump my honey in and uh, mix everything all together. We're gonna see what the temperature is at that point and I might be able to do a gravity reading right now. I might not. So let me mix this stuff together first. Of course, everything has been sanitized. So make sure you do that. Two things, because this is the honey was warm, it's easier to pour. That's why I went ahead and did it. Even though it's really hot, um, I just wanted to do that. It is mixed in um, and I know I lost, the other thing is I know I lost some honey due to evaporation, just because as you're boiling things, things evaporate into the air. So I probably went from nine pounds to maybe like eight and a half pounds of honey, um, but that's okay. This is all mixed together. I can't take a gravity reading yet and I can't introduce my yeast because it's sitting at 120 degrees Fahrenheit, which is way past where the yeast are comfortable, also for my hydrometer reading. I'm gonna put my lid on, wait until it cools down to about 80 degrees and then we'll do all that stuff. All right, it has cooled down. It's been probably five or six hours now at this point. And uh, I can take a gravity reading and I can add my yeast in. My current gravity is one, it is literally at one point, one zero zero. So this thing is exactly a 13.125% mead if it ferments all the way through everything, which it probably won't because again, this is a boche. And boches, um, they normally have residual sweetness, also residual gravity. Let's go ahead and take our yeast. I am gonna use this entire EC1118 packet. So I'm gonna throw this in, the entire thing. Do I need five grams for three gallons? No, but I would normally put about three in and I figure I might as well use the packet in this case. The last thing we're gonna do, because we have caramelized and kind of burned away a lot of the um, nutrition for the yeast, we need to add nutrition. We need to add stuff to help them ferment. So we're gonna add yeast nutrients. Specifically, I'm adding DAP, which is dimonium phosphate. It's a food grade um, 
you know, yeast nutrient. There are other options, Fermate O, Fermate K, all those. I'm gonna put all three of my table or teaspoons in, in the front. I can step feed this thing, meaning that, or use a staggered nutrient schedule, meaning that I, I took those three, um, that whole amount of yeast nutrient and spread it out over four days, but I'm not gonna do that with this. That's all in there. I've got everything labeled. Um, the yeast are just kind of sitting on top and they'll start to um, rehydrate, wake up and start fermenting. So obviously you can't see the fermentation here. I will just give you some updates about the fermentation. Let's see how it goes and see what it tastes like after the primary. It's been two weeks since we started John's Black Mead and it has finished fermenting. I know that because I've watched it as it's fermented. The airlock slowed down. I looked inside, the air bubbles slowed down. It's done fermenting. I know that for sure. Everything sanitized, sanitized liquid stuff. It looks a little murky because I was just dipping some from here. All those things. Anyway, so everything is done for today. I know this is also done fermenting because I've looked at my gravity reading. It's not 1.1 1 .1 or 1.000. We started at 1.100 for our original gravity and we have landed at 1.015. So we have 0.85, excuse me, 0 0.085 of gravity that has been chewed through or yeah, 0 0.015 of sweetness. So this thing should taste decently sweet um, because that's, I mean, that's some residual sugar for sure. Let's taste test it and then we will move it over and you'll see just how, well, you see how dark it is here, but we'll see how dark it is with the whole thing. Smelling it, it smells really interesting. It's got a malty characteristic to me. Um, you definitely get, I get like a woody, like, um, almost like an oak spiral smell to me, to it. Even though oak spiral, spirals have a different smell. Yeah, it's, um, it reminds me kind of uh, like a roasted, um, like an interesting roasted pecan. It's very roasty, very dark, malty smelling. Anyway, so let's taste it. Oh, that's very different than a lot of the, the bouches I've made. Wow. It's got a little fruitiness to it. It's got this, um, kind of nutty taste to it. I like that pecan, like I was t saying. Um, that's interesting, huh? It definitely has sweetness. The sweetness is combating the um, decently high ABV we have. We're setting at somewhere probably, what is that, one point? Uh, I'm trying to do some math, 12, not 12, 11.1-ish percent ABV. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that's kind of rough math. I'll put it right there for, anyone who's really interested. That thing, this thing's actually really good. It needs some time to, of course, meld. I've noticed the Bochets need a lot of time to melt together to really get better. So this thing will need to age for some time. Um, but I was scared of the, the length of time that we Bochet this. I thought I was gonna kill all honey character, all honey flavor. In reality, it's, it's actually kept a lot of that flavor. There's still a lot of, um, bright floral notes. I get a lot of rose, kind of lavender from this. Um, I also get this orange, like it kind of tastes like an orange blossom honey, even though it's not taste from it. Um, yeah, this thing's really, really interesting. Okay, so now here's what I want to do. Well, I'm going to go ahead and rack this over into this carboy, and then we'll talk about those other ingredients that we're going to add to this. racked over. Look at that. That is a lot of gross sediment, bochade honey that is non-fermentable, and yeast, those things. So now, um, this is what we have here. This is our black mead, which is pretty dang dark. Look at that. It's not pitch black. Um, it kind of looks like it on the camera, but it's definitely very dark, which is great. Um, here's one thing I do want to mention. There is some oxygen on top of this mead and um, I can use some things. I can use a wine saver. I can use stuff to put CO2 on top. I can drop a thing of dry ice on there to fill in some, make a CO2 blanket, all those things. I'm not worried about it. This is a young mead, meaning it's still going to be degassing. So there's going to be a layer of CO2 on it regardless. Um, I do not have the other things, the ginger root or the cardamom. Um, so I'm probably not going to be using those yet. I'm going to let this set for probably another week or two and let anything fall out of suspension, take care of itself in that regard, 
and then we'll add those two ingredients because I honestly have to go buy them. I haven't bought them yet. So here's an update about two weeks later. Let's see um, if it clears up any. All right, I did go out and get everything I need. I have not ginger root, but I have crystallized ginger, which I think will still serve a purpose. I did get some cream of tartare, so I'm gonna be using this, and my ground cardamom. The only thing I don't have yet is the uh, black peppercorns, and that's because I need to just go buy some. Also, I plan on adding those last because they are a very strong flavor, and I might not need them on for very long. So, I'm gonna go ahead and weigh out half an ounce of ginger, uh, crystallized ginger, half an ounce of the cardamom, and 1.5 uh, teaspoons of the cream of tartare. Let me go ahead and add those things. I've mixed everything in, and um, now I will uh, let this sit and age slash, you know, gain more flavors from these things. Do I know how long I need to put these in here for? No, what I'm gonna have to do is taste test it pretty regularly to um, figure out how long they need to be in there and then rack off of things. So there's a good chance that the ginger root might be, or ginger, excuse me, crystallized ginger could impart flavor really fast. Um, there's also, it, there's just a bunch of factors. I, this is not stabilized, so any new sugars are going to um, make the yeast ferment again. Essentially, the yeast will pick back up, which is okay but that's just something to know. Even now it's starting to react to the new ingredients. Let's put this away, let it age for a while and see how it turns out. Oh, last thing, the cream of tartare is for a mouthfeel for body. They use it in desserts. I think it'll provide a nice mouthfeel body here. So we'll see what happens. All right, we're back. It's been two weeks since we put the black peppercorns on. Let's taste test it. Peppercorn is um, definitely more of a, it's an aroma. You get a little bit on the mouth, but there's just so much happening with this mead because it has this caramelized, such a caramelized uh, presence alongside, of course, um, our ginger, which is adding some brightness and sweetness from the honey. There's just a lot of character. Oh yeah, there's definitely like a, a little bit of a, I almost think of the word spearminty feel, not mint, but you get the um, freshness of like a, uh, the brightness, freshness that you get from maybe some gum on this. It's got a nice full body. I think the um, cream of tartare has helped add some body to this thing. Uh, I do believe it's time to go ahead and pull it off, off of the um, black peppercorn. So let me go ahead and rack it into a new container real fast. Okay, it's racked over. Um, there was some sediment at the bottom. And of course you can see uh, that there's also the peppercorns and things. I'll probably take a photo and show you what this looks like straight down from here. There's a lot of things down there. Now, this thing started at 1.100 as the original gravity. After the primary, because it's a boche, it did not ferment through everything. We ended at 1.015, and this is another gravity reading here. We are currently still at 1.015. 1 so that's the exact same as it was before. One of my theories that I have with this is that it might be worth it to go ahead and back sweeten a little bit, even with it being sweet, because the caramelized honey character is so strong that we almost need a little bit of the regular honey character. Let me go ahead and back sweeten just a small bit of it with some honey, and let's see if we like it sweeter. Okay, I've added just a small bit of honey. Definitely very sweet, but the regular honey is kind of cutting a lot of that bite you get from the um, the very beauched honey here. Yeah, I um, it is sweet. My biggest problem with back sweetening this would be that it is going to be extra sweet, almost too sweet, and I don't want it to be unpalpably sweet. But also, in its current state, it is pretty pretty strong. Not that that's bad. I bet some age will definitely help with that. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to let it sit for a whole another month and then uh, I'm gonna come back and taste test it, and probably not on video, but then I'll show you, it, it, I'll end up maybe adding honey. So let me let this age for another month, maybe then that time it'll kind of calm down some, and then we can go from there.
right, it's been six months since we started this mead. The oak has been on there for like six to seven weeks or so. Now, what I've done, I'll go and tell you my process. This right here is the original. Let me tell you what it tasted like pre what I did. It's got this really nice full body. Um, it also has a uh, like such a complex and rich flavor in that you get this now vanilla from the oak. You also get, of course, the Beauchade honey, caramelized honey side. There's the ginger that comes through. There's a little bit of that cardamom side as well. And it's really nice. It's got this decently sweet side. Well, not decently. It's got a sweet side that you kind of have to search for a little bit. And um, that's part of the complexity of it but it's very full bodied, it's got like layers to it. What I thought after doing this was, okay, this is good, but I wanna do something new. So what I've done, let me get a, actually a quick gravity reading. Okay, so what I've done, I added a half a pound of avocado blossom honey to this because I want it to be just a tad sweeter. The previous gravity reading uh, before the avocado blossom honey was 1.010. The current gravity reading, or final gravity reading, is 1.020. We've added 10 points of gravity, and it's done this. It's kept the same characters, same body, same um, vanilla notes, all of those things, but it's pronounced just a smidge more of sweetness, which I think will make it more appreciable for people who are not as big into the mead world, who believe mead to be this super sweet thing all the time. So, at this point, I'm very pleased with this. This is not stabilized. We've not used anything to stabilize it. So we're gonna have to wait and see if there's any re-fermentation. It's been six months since we started. Theoretically, there might not be, but we're gonna come back in 24 hours. If there's no re-fermentation, we're gonna bottle it because I'm very pleased with how it is right now. All right, it's been about two weeks. The gravity hasn't moved, which is 1.020. And I went ahead and bottled it. I'll show that right here. In total, I got nine wine bottles and actually nine beer bottles from this three gallon batch. Now, I'll say this, this mead is seven months old. It has had a lot of time to age, a lot of time to meld and really um, get better. I think that this mead at its like two month point probably would not have been its best. But the oaking, everything we've done with this has made it incredible. I would absolutely say if you do it, to try it my version first and then kind of go crazy and do some other things but make this let this one age it needs a lot of age to be its best so i normally put a label on these things it looks kind of like this and um, i have a temporary label on just to make sure i know what it is i'll print out the regular labels and then put them on i've really enjoyed this mead it's been a long time since i started it but i think the payoff has been incredible and i will be sharing it with friends because uh, it's very good I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll check out the other Game of Thrones meads and the other various meads on the channel. I do a lot of mead related content. That's what my whole thing is. So I'll, I'll see you guys next time in another video. Cheers.